Oh hey, what's up? This is Václav. So the last two videos didn't really have many views. So I took a pause to think about how to fix that. And I figured I should probably talk about something more general, something simpler. So here we go. Today we will talk about wireless sensors. I will compare Wi-Fi, Zigbee and Z-Wave. There are some other protocols like for example, I use Bluetooth for some cool and cheap temperature sensors, but I guess I'll leave that for another video. So today we will look at the three. I'll tell you what each is good at, but we also cover their disadvantages. I also show you how to create a mesh network and what is critical for this to work, because I was struggling with that initially and I wanted to make it easier for you. So watch carefully. Then, in the next video, I will pick each protocol and show you how to set them up. Or at least Zigbee and Z-Wave, because Wi-Fi is pretty straightforward. So, ideally, after this video, you'll be able to pick the one protocol that is the best and use only that, right? Well, maybe not quite. At least, that didn't work for me. In my case, I ended up using all three and it gives me the best value. And if you watch this video until the end, I'm sure you will understand why. But let's start chronologically. I started with the Wi-Fi. It was very simple. It communicates over your existing Wi-Fi, over your IP network, directly to MQTT in Home Assistant. Most of the Wi-Fi sensors are different switches, smart outlets or power meters, such as Sonoff or Shelly, and obviously various IP cameras or IP devices. Or, if you'd like to have fun, you can buy an Arduino board with ESP microcontroller and build your own device, which is, I think, the biggest advantage of Wi-Fi remote sensors, because those libraries are available everywhere. Some of the off-the-shelf products support MQTT out of the box, but for most of them, I like to upload a custom firmware. Here you can write your own code in Arduino IDE, well, there is even MicroPython available, that must be fun. It gives you the most flexibility because you can program whatever logic you want, but it takes a lot of work. On the other hand, you can use Tasmoda, which is a highly customizable open source firmware with built-in support for many devices. But I like to use ESP Home, which is somewhere in the middle. It gives me the great flexibility, but it doesn't require complex coding. It is configurable in YAML, pretty similar to Home Assistant. The great thing about ESP Home is it uses Home Assistant API, which is very fast and powerful. It gives me access to Home Assistant entities and services, but more on that on the next video. Wi-Fi also has few disadvantages. Mainly, it is its power consumption. There are some projects that try to do microcontrollers that run on a battery, like Trigboard, but in general, you want to have these connected to power or to a large battery, which limits where you can use them. The other thing is some of the more interesting sensors do not exist with Wi-Fi. Like, you probably won't find a Wi-Fi thermostatic valves or motion sensors or door locks. And finally is the security. They're connected to your IP network, so arguably, they're more vulnerable than the other two that are only available locally. So, that was Wi-Fi. Next, take Z-Wave. I started with it when I decided to automate the heating. I was looking for thermostatic valves, and most of them I found were using Z-Wave, even though this may have changed lately. I also have a few door and temperature sensors from Fibaro, and one motion sensor as well, and then the rain sensor. I was using Z-Wave for a long time, but I learned that most of the smart lights, like Philip Hue or the IKEA, they use Zigbee. And Sonoff also came with a bunch of very cool Zigbee sensors, and uh, they seem to be much cheaper and smaller than the Z-Wave. I thought that I made a wrong decision with the Z-Wave. But then I learned that I can get the Texas Instruments USB Zigbee dongle from IT and it works great with Home Assistant, and it cost, wait for it, $3.99. So this is no-brainer, right? You can get the Zigbee door sensors, 
motion sensors or temperature sensors from IT under $10 each, while the Fibaro sensors cost over 50 bucks. So this is how I ended up using all three. Now, what are the advantages of the Z-Wave and the Zigbee over Wi-Fi? First, they run well on battery. You just put a small coin cell battery in there, stick it somewhere in a corner and it will run there for a year or so. And because it's so easy and because they are cheap, you will end up using a lot of them. This is quite addictive. The second, if not the biggest advantage is they create a mesh network. So the devices connect one to another and pass messages. So this means that you can connect devices in quite a large house with only a single Z-Wave or Zigbee controller. There is one little detail though that is very important to understand and I got it wrong in the beginning. Not every device serves as a routing device to connect the others and pass the messages. Typically, this is only the devices that are connected to the AC power and this is true both for Z-Wave and Zigbee. So the motion sensors, temperature sensors, door sensors or thermostat, they will not help here. But all you need to do is to get a few smart lights or smart outlets and it works like a charm. Let me show you how I did that. I did install a few Zigbee bulbs in these lights and I configured the shell switches in the wall boxes not to turn off the relay when I press the switch but to have them on all the time or I could have connected the live wire to the light directly, right? And then in the ESP home when I press the switch it will call the home assistant service to toggle the light. It works seamlessly. And the other advantage is I can control other things as well. I can control its brightness or the color or I can configure what light each switch controls regardless on where the physical connection is. It's quite neat. For Z-Wave I got this plug from Fibaro. I currently don't use it for anything. It is just hanging there but I'm thinking I can use it for the phone charger. It also measures the consumption so it can tell me when the phone is fully charged or when it's charging. But I get that from the Home Assistant mobile application as well. So it will be quite redundant, I guess. As for the disadvantages, one, they do not communicate that often. This is a compromise between the battery life and the frequency of communication. Usually you get something like one sample per hour or if the value changes by a certain amount, which is plenty if you measure something like a temperature, then obviously they push the message immediately for events such as movement or door open. And second, they can be somewhat hard to set up. You have to add the device to the controller and then perhaps heal the network, which usually works, but I did run into some difficulties with it, especially with the Zigbee. But once you get the grip, it works quite nicely. So that was the introduction. And I'll catch you in the next video where we'll talk about how to get started with the Z-Wave and Zigbee. And until then, bye.